Yeah. Okay. Look, we will continue, but look, Felicity, I'm going to bring you in there and I'll come back to you, Vice, Vice Chancellor. No Felicity, your area, and I'm going to get you to explain this, is, is not in you know, engineering or hard industry or whatever, but it's come out of your work in fine arts and it's about the application of music therapy um, across um, aged care and, and other areas. So just tell us a little bit about that because, folks, this is a very... And it's exactly what the Vice-Chancellor was alluding to. Not all innovation is about hard commercialisation. A lot of it is about the public good as well. So, Felicity, yes, thanks, tell us about your work. Thanks, Maxine. Yes, and listening to the Vice-Chancellor talk about um, interdisciplinarity and... Um, creativity and solving problems, that's kind of what we think about when we think about music therapy. So our field is using music in very strategic and creative ways to help a range of different people with different needs. So we work with um, babies in the NICU, we work with uh, adolescents with uh, various mental health challenges, we work with um, young people with disabilities, adults with disabilities, people in, in neuro rehabilitation uh, centres and the field that, that's the field that I've specialised in but also I've specialised in uh, working with people with dementia. We also work in cancer care, palliative care, all sorts of neurodegenerative diseases. We, we, we cover the spectrum, really. Just to pick up on one of those, yes. as you said, you mentioned dementia there and I think you were telling me earlier that in fact a lot of your work is is the, the application is with, with the families of, of carers. So tell us about that. Sure. So one of the projects that um, we're getting up and running at the moment is working with family carers of people living with dementia. And so what we do is we know that, that music, uh, it stimulates autobiographical recall. We remember things through music. It stimulates our emotions. Uh, we feel better with music, the sex, drugs and rock and roll. It's all uh, mm. the, um, connected in our uh, neural networks. And we really draw on those principles to, to help people with dementia. And so what we're doing in our study is, is um, training family carers to use music in very strategic ways. We all know that music is good for us. We all enjoy music. But knowing how to use it in different contexts is, is not something that um, the average person knows. Give, give us an example. What does it mean to use music in a strategic way? Shall I give you a concrete example? Yeah, please. Sure. Yep. Uh, so let's just imagine that um, you're caring for your loved one who has dementia and they're about to go and take a shower. We know that getting undressed, it's cold at the moment, right? They're sitting there on a, on a chair, a bit ready to be wheeled into, into a shower. And it's cold, they're distressed, they don't know why they're, they're undressed, they're confused, and they start to get agitated. And if they start to get agitated, then they're at risk of having a fall, falling out of the chair. So what we do is we show the carers how to sing in a way uh, that uh, calms the, that person with dementia, uh, to, to connect with them so that they are less disoriented, um, and to also calm the carer as well, because if the carer is stressed, there's, it's going to become even more complicated. Mm, mm. And how's it, how are things working? What's the feedback? What's the impact? Oh, the feedback is really good. Uh, uh, we're really uh, showing, but it's also not just about managing the symptoms, it's also about the relationship too, because we know that people uh, who have dementia, um, they start to kind of lose their, their um, connection with other people. They start to forget who their family members are. And that's actually often more distressing than the, the actual management of the symptoms themselves. And so music, because it takes them back, uh, they become animated, they recall things about their past, they also start to recognise people around them through this process. And then you can start to see this connection again, the reconnection, I should say, with the, with the carer and other family members. And Felicity, this is all being scaled up through research. Tell us about that. Yeah, so um, we've got a study that's been funded uh, in part by the National Health and Medical Research Council, but also involving five other countries um, in Europe who also have funding from their, from their countries. And uh, we're, we're going to be recruiting 500 dyads, or carer and, and person with dementia, so 1,000 people in our study. And we're, um, we've done the pilot and we're now ready to recruit, actually, for uh, the big study now. Right, right. Now, isn't this interesting? So you're, you're talking about this at a time when, in fact, we're hearing a lot of 
a lot of distressing stories coming out of the, yes. the Royal Commission into, into aged care. And we also, also know what the, the demographic, demographic figures look like and all the rest of it. So this is a, 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 this is a critical area, isn't it? that we improve these therapies. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and in fact, just last night, I was uh, on a Zoom meeting with uh, people from my association, the Australian Music Therapy Association, and we're in the process of writing a submission to the Royal Commission for Aged Care and making some recommendations about what we want, would think they should do. But also some of the other work that I've been doing in residential care homes, such as Bupa homes. Um, we know that with the Royal Commission, there's been challenges uh, and so we're, we actually want to work with them to, to work out how we can um, and help the people that are living in their homes. Mm. Good. Glenn, can I move on? Roles we can okay. Play. Felicity, do you agree with that approach? And I'm just also thinking about, that, uh, well, you'd be dealing with a lot of different disciplines. Uh, equally, I mean, you were telling me before, you've got PhD students lining up to be involved in, in your area, which is quite encouraging. Tell us about that. Yeah, sure. So just thinking about the interdisciplinarity uh, aspect too, because being the creative arts, music, but also being a health discipline, we really embrace uh, mm. both the health sector and, and the, um, the creative arts sector. But also um, with this, this project with the carers, we're also bringing in engineering because we're going to be translating mm. this into, into an app uh, so that we don't have to have someone come to the home and do it in a face-to-face -face context, but actually um, create something that can be scaled up um, and taught. The, the same skills that we teach can be taught through, through an app. So that's, again, you know, bringing in another, uh, another discipline mm -hmm. into this. And we have also health economists uh, also working with us to work mm -hmm. out how cost effective this, this is as well. And that's, I mean, for music therapy, this is kind of quite innovative. Uh, this is a new, a new thing for us yeah. to be thinking about the cost benefit. It's not really a term that we like to use, but sorry, uh, it's not a term we like to use, but we're starting to accept that this is part of the way we have to go. Until you dean that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Duncan, coming back to you, there was